they do love ones. Mm -hmm. So that's an okay one for you? Yeah. Um, I know last week was a little tough on yeah. us, but uh, yeah, we feel like okay this week with mm -hmm. that one. Yeah, we all we get we got you know input on that. Mm -hmm. we, we was together on that one, huh? Yeah, like you said, our it's testimony and help to somebody else. Mm -hmm. So helping make sure we keep that in mind as we go through the difficult ones. Mm -hmm. That it's gonna help somebody else. Exactly. That's what you you have to keep that perspective. Yeah. You have to, you know. Otherwise, you like like you said, like today's message. Where are we going? Hmm, where do you go from here? Yeah. So when that happens, you gotta know what's you gotta see what's coming next. Yeah. I agree. And so you gotta keep moving. Okay. It's the same it's the same scenario. True. We know it gets difficult sometimes oh, yeah. and you know at times. This was your life. Yeah. And even when conveying it to a friend or conveying it to a, a younger child, then a sibling or younger Younger sibling, basically, because uh, you got relatives, younger relatives, even, you know, and they want to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they get shocked because you got to tell all these different stories and what they were like, and you know, they yeah. see pictures. They see a picture. Who was that? You know, and you got to. Yeah, that's tough on you, man, because you they trying to bring up all them emotions. Yeah, so just you know, like I said, uh, just keep, you know. Lost the train of thought, but definitely, you so know, it's helping them bring, keep, it's keep helping that them to know, yeah, it's helping them, it does, especially those the uh, relatives, it's helping them to have an identity of who they are. Sure. They don't know who they are all the way are, and so they're asking questions for that reason. Sure. Not so much to make you feel what have you, how you feel, it's to help them become who they're going to become mm -hmm. and understand where they come, who they come from. Okay. You know, and so that's why you you have to exist. Yeah, definitely. And you have to tell the story of the lost one. Yeah. Of the lost one, the other one. And so that's my, my you know perspective and understanding why I have to be here and why I have to be telling the story. You know, you wonder why are you left alone? Mm -hmm. In my case, mm -hmm. but and I'm not really left alone, but I am left alone. You know, he said there's nobody from my childhood down. You got my adult years, yeah. I got, you know, different ones that can, you know, share some some snippets and everything, tidbits. That's about it going on. But I don't have a lot of, uh, from my youth at all. The youth are mm -hmm. gone. True. There's nobody can say, hey, is he how he was as a baby or how he was as a little kid. Yeah. 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 And look, dang, you know, and that's what every now and then, that's the way the response I am, even with myself, like, wake up and like, dang, <laughs> yeah. you know, because it happened sooner than it was supposed to. Right, right. You know, um, you know, didn't expect, it was one thing losing one mother, but then you lose another mother, you know, like, dang, you yeah. know, because, you know, my, uh, Stepmom could have uh, been able to tell mm -hmm. about my teenage years. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, but that's, that's no more. You know? So, like you say, you definitely, you know, as, don't, as the things come, like we said last week, as they come, don't just dismiss them. You know, acknowledge yeah. your feelings as yeah. they come about. Right. You know, remember the person, but just don't. Stay in no, it or get don't, stuck don't, in Don't dwell. Yeah, don't get stuck in No. Because that's where you tend to lose you yeah, you'll in slide. the process. So. Yeah, you slide, man. A, a downward spiral, spiral, uh, spiral, as they say. Right. And it goes along yeah. with, you know, what we're, what our topic is for today, yeah. caring for aging loved ones. Yeah. But we need to get this going. Yeah. So. Because we've been talked about that. Yeah. I'm weird. We're, we're in it now. Yeah, I keep right. telling you, we always yeah, okay. I'm not just making sure. Yeah. Like I was just saying, like, and I copy today, caring for aging loved ones, that can be very challenging as well. It can put a strain on you, so. Man, that, that, we know that one firsthand. <laughs> we never, I never had experienced that before. Yeah. Um, of, of that degree of caring for a loved one, uh, an aging loved one, I never did. And it almost, like I said, it, 
I was thinking about doing a, a job when I retired to move the elder along. I can't do it. Yeah. Even though it was in public service dealing with, uh, you know, the elderly in different times, you know, I've seen them deceased out of my life, but to go through the emotional mm -hmm. ups and downs with them. You, you, you remember? Yeah. I didn't know that they revert back and then come forward and then revert back or go in the middle and you know you like you know for me it was traumatizing yeah. at times yeah because I'm like hey this is supposed to be you 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 know my matriarch man you the one that this ain't supposed to be, this ain't supposed to be going on but they had to wrap my mind around where they were right. To come to the grips with reality of where things are, yeah, where, where they are, and then you know, we're wondering, like, man, so this is I don't want to grow old mm. to become like this, I don't want to do it. I, I, so, my thing is always, uh, like I told you, I said, man, if I get that a certain way, put me away, you know, because I don't want no, I don't want that on nobody. I get it, and that that's just like wow, you know, so I'm not putting you away, no, either. but I mean, we didn't, we didn't say you can come on in with us either. Yeah, true. We didn't do that because we knew if that that would have really impacted our own. Yeah. And we knew that they had to be in their own space. Yeah, buddy. So before we get too far into the topic, definitely want to say thank you guys for joining us and yeah. welcome back to another yeah. episode yeah. of Philo Talk with TNT. Yes. Um, it's these right. are just things that we again like we've learned along the way and that has helped us. And that we use to help others that may be facing the same situations that um, they thought they were alone in dealing with. Um, my book, uh, Breaking the Silence, You're Not Alone, kind of talks about a lot of that stuff as well. Um, because people tend to think that, you know, they're dealing with the situation. No one understands what they're going through and how challenging this is or that is because they feel like they're doing it alone. Um, but just the, our our goal is to help people understand and know that you're not in, alone in this. That you're dealing, you've got other people in this world that are dealing with some of the same things you're dealing with. Um, it's just knowing knowing that you're not alone is helpful in itself. Um, it helps you to be able to know that you can come out of it. That there is joy on the other side. There is peace on the other side. There is uh, happiness on the other side. There's a lot once you can get over and get to the other side of things. Not get over it, but get over the hurdles of life that come with it. Um, so definitely, adjust. yes, make the adjustment. No, no, I'm saying that you get to the hurdles, that means that you're adjusting. Oh, okay, life. okay, That's okay. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah, but definitely, you're also making adjustments with your yeah. life because this is new norms you're having to deal with once you have to transition out of different things so they can kind of coincide together. Um, but as you guys know, I'm Tay. And I'm T. And we welcome you guys back to Phil and Talk with T and Tay. Um, we were discussing uh, caring for an aging loved one and how that can affect relationships. It can affect uh, you, you and your relationship with yourself, your relationship with your mate, your relationship with your children, your relationship with those people. Um, but um, figuring out how to prop, how to do it without losing yourself in the process of right. it because it can pull you down and really take you out if you're not careful. Um, I think T was talking more so on the fact because we dealt with, I've never dealt with dealing with the aging uh, parent or loved one either until um, his grandmother passed. Because my, for my grandmother, when she passed, and I think we talked about this a, long, a while ago, there were so many of us. There was aunts and cousins and brother, uncles and uh, nephews and nieces. And it was, everybody was all in it. So it wasn't like you were doing this all by yourself. Um, trying to provide care for this person you were everyone was there giving a helping hand and you know being there being present and just being in the moment with you but when you had to do it all by yourself or just the two of you um it can really uh take a toll on you um emotionally uh physically and if you're not careful it can start to pull you apart yeah, it's a bridge. Uh, yes yeah. it really can um <clears throat> We're not saying that to say don't care for a loved one. It's just making sure as you do care for that loved one that you provide the best care you can for them, but also that you taking care of yourself in the process because it's very easy to get wrapped up in making sure you're there or trying to be present with them that you forget to care for you and then you end up getting sick and then something happened to you because you didn't take care of yourself during that process or transition of them 
uh, uh, I guess, aging out, yeah. so yeah. to speak. Yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Um, what else you got there? No, I mean, I'm just saying that's a good way of putting it. You know, it, like I said, the wedge uh, that can happen because they're demanding attention. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to give attention to your family at home, your home life, and you're having to keep all these things in balance and perspective. But you really have to know that um, not only them, you know, your family and, and your, lo your loved one that you, you're caring for, don't forget about yourself. Yeah. Uh, you still got to have that self-help that, you know, you got to take care of yourself. Because if you don't take care of yourself, you're no good to nobody else. And, uh, and you got to be able to take that time away and it's okay. Uh, you know, some get the opportunity to be able to take a, a, a time away overnight or something, but sometimes you just have to take that hour sit, maybe mm -hmm. listen to music, maybe read a book, maybe sit with the windows down if the weather is uh, conducive for that uh, and look at nature, you know, just to clear your mind for mm -hmm. the moment because all this is happening. And it's not going anywhere, right? Because the loved one is is, is, is still has need of care, mm -hmm. but there's levels of care, and you you got to know those levels that you can handle and give, right? Because if you can't give those levels, you, you're going to be overwhelmed, mm -hmm. and you got to know that going in because you got to make sure that you're hearing the doctors and what they're saying and the different things and what that entails because. You can't, there's not enough hours in the day mm -hmm. that you can provide uh, a loved one's uh, uh, that constant care it, and without it taking its toll on you because if they need, you know, medicines, medicines to be filled, medicines alone to be filled uh, uh, enough, man, that takes time. Mm -hmm. Doctor's appointments take time. If they got the needs at the grocery store, most likely they do. Do they picky eaters or they got certain ways they eat things? They don't eat things like you do. <coughs> Some can't even handle the noise in your home. And so you, if you have them in your home, you got to be mindful if that is going to work. You know, and the only way I can say is the trial basis, mm -hmm. having them in your home and uh, seeing, you know, how things will work, you know, from time to time. You know, if it, especially if they're still existing, you got to. Uh, if they're married, they have uh, both both uh, both loved ones together. Then they have, have them in their home, have them in your home. Make sure that the Asian uh, loved ones can handle the noise and handle how you live. Then you're okay. You know that hey, they can come on in. Mm -hmm. But don't be surprised if they change, uh, flip a script on you, and you'd be like, wow, what happened? Uh, we was just yeah. doing this two years ago, but then they changed because you know they're like they they change. Yeah. And you got to realize, man, okay, I, I don't know if I can handle this uh, flip back and forth. I was going to say in regards to um, when you say do the trial period, don't feel like you don't love them because right. you decided to place them in care in a nursing home right. or in a um, rehab facility to help ensure that they're getting the, the care that they need. Because sometimes they do require 24 hour care yeah, and it's just not something that you can provide to them or you're not equipped to do that or your home is not equipped to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, making sure that you're it's OK, don't beat yourself up because you say, well, I've got to put them in a the facility. That didn't mean you love them any less. Because you decided that, you know, putting them in a facility that can provide them the type of care, the type of space. Because, again, they're used to their own space before they come to you. So it kind of helped them kind of keep some familiarity with um, what they had prior to having to be put in this position. You're not putting them to where, oh, they're confined to just this one room in your house. Or it doesn't feel like they're, um, they have that independence anymore. You're not stripping that away from them by putting them in a, a um, assisted living facility if that's what they're able to do. Um, but you're you're being mindful of them and what their needs are. You're being mindful of you and what your needs are. You're being mindful of your your mate and your children and what your household needs are. Um, when you make that difficult decision, it can be challenging because you're like, well, I don't know if they're going to treat them right. I don't know how this is going to go or that's going to go. Um, and a lot of times we don't know how it's going to go. And then there's a lot of horror stories of bad um, facilities, bad facilities bad. out there. Um, but then there's also these, they're, they're great facilities that really care care about the people that are being put in their, in their, in their, in their care. Um, mm -hmm. So you've got to make sure that whatever you do, you don't beat yourself up by the choices you make when you know you've done all you can to help them. 
in your space, when you're, you've tried, you've put them here, you've done this, you've done that, and you see that putting them or bringing them into your home is going to be something that's not going to be healthy for anybody, then you've got to make that difficult decision where well, I'm going to have, maybe have to go with the uh, facility and put them there. Um, but being okay with that is the difficult part. Um, you've got to know that, hey, you still got to live even after um, you still, they, you know, they need their space, their time. Yes, at night they may be um, by themselves, but before you even came into the mix, they were by themselves. Um, so they're used to having that, some of them prefer to have that time um, to themselves and want that. So it's not like you don't love them anymore because you decided to do that. It's just you are um, caring enough about how you feel about them and how they feel about how you how your home is functioning and going that you make that difficult decision when it comes to that um another thing you talked about um taking that time to yourself if you've got someone who's aging or or like in hospice or at the point where they're on their last leg you know that it's a matter of time before they pass away um surrounding yourself with the idea of them dying or surrounding yourself with death can initially kill your spirit as well. So taking the time out to have time alone, like you said, to read, uh, to just, you know, sit and just take in the, the fresh air, um, something that's outside of being right there with that person 24-7 uh, and allowing their life that's doing in a way to overly consume you. We, we know how challenging it is to lose that loved one. So, but... Again, as we said in the last last episode, don't lose yourself in that because they want you to keep living when they're gone. Yeah. They, they need you to really, keep living. Yeah. Again, they need you to keep telling their story. So um, in order to do that, um, you've got to make sure that you keep, um, keep making sure you take care of yourself. Self-care. Self-care is not selfish. You're not being selfish because you're taking care of yourself. You're being mindful of the effects that losing someone can have on you. <clears throat> so when you're providing that care to an aging loved one, you want to make sure that you keep definitely communication lines open and you're being mindful of what that person needs and what your needs are. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how I see it. No, and that's, that's kind of like, you know, how I feel like it can help. Because mm -hmm. some people, like I said, may feel really guilty because they had to put their mom or their dad or their grandma or grandpa in a nursing home. Um, but you have to really face reality. Um, now, some people do it because they are this, those type of people, but some people had to face reality on what they were really able to do and couldn't do. Um, your home may not be set up to be able to take care of a loved one. You may have stairs and you may not have to where they can be downstairs and have a spot to themselves down there. Um, there may be a lot of factors that come into play that where you just can't do it on your own. So um, being realistic and being mindful of that and just making sure you do what's best for you and for them. Making sure we, you're considering everybody in a whole with this because it's not just a one-sided thing. You're considering the whole picture of it and all. <clears throat> But I don't know what else in that area could you say or if that could help somebody that may be dealing with that right now. Like, how is there anything else that you can think you can offer as advice to kind of help them process that? Or, yeah, processing it is one thing that you never really gonna fully process it because your emotions, their emotions are everywhere, your emotions are everywhere yeah. because they have an illness or they have dementia or they, um. Uh, you know, there's so many things that come up uh, when they're aging. And then some don't have anything, you know, some you can have them in your home and everything is just wonderful. But then um, all I say is if you are going outside the home, uh, do your research mm -hmm. and uh, the best you can because everyone puts a good uh, smile in front and, and nice tours and all this, but um, then the facilities aren't good. And if you can talk to some of the residents there maybe having some lunch with them uh, as far as the uh, you know when they have lunch time dinner time breakfast time because most of the time the facilities eat three times a day uh you can talk with them or you just pop in and then you can talk with people you know the residents there and then maybe sitting around you know uh, just lounging or talking to each other and you're able to do that if you're looking to uh 
place your loved one in that facility. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you can get a lot of insight from that as well. But uh, it, it's, it's a process and I just, uh, my heart goes out to anyone that's going through that even right now. Uh, it, it, it doesn't get easier, but you are able to cope with it. Uh, just like I say, and my wife says, you know, don't forget about yourself through it all. Mm -hmm. uh, but even the financial aspect of it is really uh, strong because you having to make sure that your household is still functioning right, as well as now providing for a loved one. And uh, it's, 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 a, it's a lot that's going on. And uh, you just have to realize what you are able to handle. Yeah. And, uh, I, you know, I really don't know uh, what what to say on it. It's just that, you know, like I said, we all have that time where we have to hope that someone is going to care for us mm -hmm. or we have everything lined up where we're going to this facility and hopefully the facility hasn't changed name or the facility hasn't closed down or et cetera. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, just... Uh, get the advice and uh, do your research and uh, care for the loved one as best you can and, yes. and uh, you know make sure that you guys uh, as you have siblings and <coughs> other family members involved or friends even that are involved that are uh, part of the loved one's life make sure you all communicate it you know because a team of you can do it mm -hmm. uh, but you got to realize what the need of the individual loved one is you know, you got to know what they what they have going on conditional wise and can you meet those needs? Because there are uh, live in um, aides that come sure. to your home mm -hmm. uh, and you don't have to take them to a facility. Sure. And then you also have um, where they can uh, visiting off and on and give um, amends <laughs> as far as the shots and, you know, whatever meds they need. And then they go on about their day, and then your loved one can go about their day as well and stay independent. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, that, that's all I say is just to research it all and uh, get a, a heads up if you can, if you had that opportunity to find research it ahead of time. We didn't get that opportunity. We didn't. It, it happened so quickly, and uh, and I that's why we're saying like we are and make sure that you know think about things ahead of time. You know the loved one is is good now, but they are aging and you know, yeah. you, you just gotta start looking at things uh, differently and seeing ahead of time and preparing for them. Uh, that way, when the time comes, you're, you're as prepared as you can be. Right. I'm not gonna say you're gonna be fully prepared because it's always something new that comes up in uh, caring for a uh, aging loved one. True, so true, excuse me, my cough. Yeah, so, <coughs> but, excuse me, I feel like I've had this cough all month, y'all. Yeah. Won't go away, but. We'll get back. That's all I have on that too. Um, that, I mean, you said it in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, just making sure you're being realistic, um, thinking of the loved one and also yourself and your situation and knowing what you really truly can do. Um, not taking on more than you can truly handle right. um, and just being mindful of that. But definitely um, do the best you can in providing the care you can um, and realizing when it's time to call in the help that you need. Especially when you don't have the support of, of, of loved ones along with you to help you when you're it's just you and your maid or um, it's only like a handful of you that's helping to do it. Yeah. It can be very um, daunting task to try to you know do all that you can. So you want to make sure that um, you know when to call for help or to get the help that you need to bring it in. But right. um, it's, it's doable. But you will probably more likely need help to do it. So, but the goal of it is to make sure you don't allow yourself to get so lost in it that you pull away from your mate, you pull away from your children, you pull away from your home so much because you're pouring, you're pouring so much into there that you've forgotten about how to care for over here. So just make sure you have that balance. Keep that balance. Keep a uh, focus and just um, knowing that you know the loved ones you still are loving on the loved one you're just making uh, difficult decisions to sure ensure that they have the best care they can have Correct. in their mind they feel like exactly. only you can give it exactly but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but there's yeah. more to it they just it's getting them to understand that there's more to this than you can provide so being able to give that to them exactly. but 
that's all I have. Again, sorry about my coughing. Hopefully, it'll be gone soon. Here's hoping, guys. The season's breaking, so maybe so. But, huh? Seasonal, baby. I am. This is this the time. Fair weather, baby. You know, that, that thing. This is the time so, of year where the allergies will eat me up, yeah. you know? So, I'm hoping and praying that as I transition the seasons that I'll get better. But in time, I shall. You will. You will. I shall. I will, and I shall, and I shall, and I will. All right, but that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope that um, we've been helpful um, in our topics, been able to share things with you. Again, if you know someone who could benefit from this, don't forget to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Do what y'all do best, but keep watching. We appreciate you and those of you that are watching, that have joined us in this journey, um, and that have commented and that continues to let us know that you are enjoying this content that we're putting out. Um, so we look forward to sharing more with you guys next week. <laughs> um, we look forward to sharing with you guys next week and um, hope to see you join us again next week on Pillow Talk with TNT. Thanks so much for watching. Thank Bye, guys. Thank you. See you. <laughs> see you safe. <laughs>